Hey everyone out there in Banjo Land, Mike Heading here. I've got an absolute beginner lesson for you today. We're gonna just talk about the basic banjo chords. So this is usually when I get a new in-person student and that has no experience. This is usually what I start them off with. And we're gonna keep our right hand, our picking hand, really simple on this lesson. We're basically just gonna focus on learning some of the basic bar chords and some of the basic two finger chords. Absolutely kind of must know stuff to, to advance on the banjos. All right, here it is. All right, let's just start by talking about some of the basic banjo chords. This is usually one of the first things I start when I have a new student, especially if they're starting from square one. So we're gonna start with the, the absolute basics in this lesson. So in with a banjo, we actually get one chord for free. Our, if we just strum open, that's actually a G chord. You may have heard that the banjo is tuned to open G. So that's kind of, we get one free chord with the banjo, where, for example, a guitar or a mandolin, if you strum it open without putting your left hand down, it's not actually a chord. It's, it's not tuned to a chord like a banjo is. So we actually get one chord for free. So if you just strum open, you, you know your first banjo chord, G. And what I'd recommend, and even if you're not starting using picks yet, which I recommend, but if you're, let's say even you're, if you're just playing with your fingertips at this point, Try, we're gonna initially start by trying to get to use three fingers because we're gonna play three finger style banjo. So what I recommend is playing on the top three strings, strings three, two, and one, and seeing if you can just use each finger for one string. So I'm gonna use my thumb on the third string, my index on the second, and my middle on the first. And remember, it doesn't matter if you're using picks right off the bat. So just, we're just practicing getting our three fingers moving. So let's just do that a few times. So just practice using those three fingers, even if you go backwards. And some of these will be what's called a roll that we'll use to play melodies in the future. But like I said, when you're just starting, you know, even just coordinating your three fingers is challenging. So don't worry about if you're doing a specific roll pattern at this point. That can come later. Just start by using three different fingers and I'm Remember, I'm using one finger for each string. So that might take you a while. So, so you know, spend as much time as you need to on that. So since we're tuned to open, I can also use a bar chord to play other chords. So I'm just gonna use my first finger and I'm gonna go up to the fifth fret. So right up here to where your, your um, fifth string peg is. And I'm gonna put my finger on the top three strings, those same th strings we were just playing. And I'm gonna try and do that same roll. One thing you may notice is normally my thumb's kind of up here where you can see it. When I do those bar chords, my thumb actually drops down and I pinch, I pinch my thumb and index finger together. The other thing I'm doing is I'm using the side of my finger, not the top, because if you're using this flat part, you're kind of fighting against your knuckles because they naturally bend the other way. Whereas if you use the side of your finger, you're not fighting against that knuckle. So that's really important. So just Take some time to figure out how to get that to sound good. What I do is called the string test. Just play each one on its own. And just adjust your hand accordingly. Remember the secret with the frets is to be close to the fret without being right on top of it. If you're, if you're too on top of it, it sounds like that. And if you're too far away, it sounds like that. So you wanna be up close to the fret, but not right on top of it. And that's just every banjo and player is a little different. So just figure out you know, how to get that to sound clean. So that's a C, that's a really common one. So what you can do is practice going from open, you know, maybe do a couple of those, those patterns, maybe do three, let's say. And then I'm gonna try to put my finger down and do a pattern of three. And then go back to open. just trying to get your two hands to operate independently. You need your right hand to be able to keep moving, you know, while you take your left hand on and off. 
Okay, let's take that chord and slide it up to the seventh fret. That's another very common one, D. So we got G. At the fifth fret is C. At the seventh fret is D. And actually, wherever you move that index finger will be a chord, so you can move that around wherever you want. Those will all be different chords, but G, C, and D are very common um, chords you'll use in the key of G. So those would be the ones I would start with. So let's do that a few times. And remember, don't worry too much about what you're doing with your right hand. In this lesson, we're practicing our left hand, so you know, even if you're just strumming with your right hand, this is really a left hand exercise, so. Go down to C. Now back to D. You can mix them up in whatever order you want. And then back to open. So play those as many times as you need to. Mix them up in as many different orders as you can. The more ways you mix them up, the, the better you'll kind of reinforce that you know it. Okay? So let's look at one more down here that you'll need. A at the second fret if you do that bar chord. Is another really common one. That's A. So we got C, D, G, and A. And I'm going to go through these kind of quickly, so feel free to pause the video, and I'm certainly not expecting you to digest all this immediately, so this might take a little time, so be patient. Okay? So now that we've got the basic bar chord down, Let's look at some, some open two finger chords down here that, that's not just using one finger. So let's learn the C and the D. So our C is if we put our first finger on the first fret of the second string, and we're gonna use our third finger, our ring finger, up on the second fret of the first string. So we've got, let's play those top three strings again. So we've got open, first fret, and second fret. And use your, your first and third finger, and I'll show you why in a second. So use your first and third finger. I'm just going to do that same roll. Remember, do the string test if you need to. You have to figure out how to bend your hand so you can get all those notes to ring out cleanly. You know, you can practice taking your hand off. Add your hand. Remember, you're trying to get your two hands to operate independently, which is tough. So a D that I'll use is if you take your C and move it to the middle strings, so I move both of them up this way, and then I slide them up one fret. So now I'm on two, three, and open on the top three strings. That's a really good D. To go to your C, you'd go back down and then down. Let's go to open to G and then let's try and go to that D. So that's a D. Another one that you might learn right off the bat is D7. And I like knowing both because D7 is really good for certain instances, but it it's kind of has a bluesier flavor. And if you're playing a happy song in the key of D, for example, you won't want to use that bluesy D7. You'll want to use your regular D. But I'll show you D7 too because it's another common one you'll need to. Let's go back to our C once. We got first fret, second string, third finger up on the second fret of the first string. That's our C. If we take off our third finger and put our second finger on the second fret of the third string, so now we've got two, one, and open. That's D7. That's a really good one, too, to figure out how you have to bend your hand. Let's go back to G. Let's go to C. D7. your right hand right off the bat. Okay, so let me show you a couple more real quick. Let's go back to our C ones. And that's a two finger C. You can also do a three finger C as if you take your middle finger, you put it down on the second fret of the four string. So you've got two, open, one, and two. Those are my frets. That's the, that's the three finger C. So you don't have to do that one, but 
it adds another flavor and if you, you end up playing the four string now you've got that string covered so that's a that's the three finger c you can always do the two finger c but that's a good one to practice so let me show you one more and i'll show you why we we wanted to learn the three finger c that's also why i wanted to do that second fret first string with my third finger because now i can do the full c whereas if you did it this way you really can't do the full C, it's really tricky, so do it this way. Let me show you one more. If you take off your index finger now and leave your other two fingers down, that's an E minor. So let's play the top three strings again. If I add my first finger, it's back to C. Take your first finger off, it's E minor. So even with those four chords, G, C, D and E minor, you could probably play close to 10,000 songs. There's so many songs you could play with just those four chords. So remember, like I said, work on mixing up in different orders. That's really going to reinforce that you know it. Okay, real quick, let me show you a couple more chords and then we'll call it a day. So let's go back to our three finger C once. If we take our index finger and we move it up to the third string, so now we've got one, open, two. Those are my top three strings. That's actually an E major. So basically the only difference between E minor is you put your first finger now on the third string. And with that one, you want to be careful you don't hit the fifth string because it won't really sound that good. So just leave off the fifth string with your strum there. So that's an E major. And the, reason, the way I remember major versus minor is major is happy, minor is spooky. So very simplistic, but it works. And most people can tell a, a major chord versus a minor chord if you just remember happy versus spooky. So major, minor. Okay, let's go back to our C one more time. Show you a couple more. If you take our second finger and move it down to the third string, so we've got two, one, and two. Those are my frets. That's an A minor. That's another really common one you'll want to learn. Lastly, and I would wait until this one, until you're, you've got all the other ones down, but this is an F. This is another really common one. So if we put our pinky on the third fret of the highest string and you can take your third finger off, that might release the pressure a little bit. That's an F chord. And you could go back to A minor, C, G, and C. So those are the basics. Let me show you one more, La lastly, a very quick. This one you probably won't use too often, but it's a good two finger chord to learn. If you take your first finger and put it up on the first fret of the first string, take my second finger and put it on the second fret of the third string. So I've got two, open, and one. It sounds a little weird when you just do it on its own, but that's a B7. So you might use that one if you were playing like E, A, and B7 back to E, you know, if you're doing like a basic blues progression or something like that. So you probably won't use that one too often, but occasionally you will run into it. It's basically like the D7, except you move your first finger to the first string. So practice all those chords, and remember, don't worry about in this lesson what you're doing with your right hand, whether you're strumming, practicing a new roll, focus on one hand at a time. So if I'm learning some new chords with my left hand, I'm gonna keep my right hand really simple. And vice versa, if I'm working on some new right hand patterns, I'm going to keep my left hand really simple. All right, hopefully that helps you out. All right, good luck.